Hey, Jay, how's it going? It's going great, Rajiv. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for making some time. Uh, I'm really excited to have you. Uh, the Magic, of course, is a household name here in Orlando. But as you know, there's so much to the behind the scenes, uh, off-court action, right? There's business, the technology of running a sports team. And, uh, and that's pretty exciting, too. So I'd love to get into that with you. So I really appreciate you making some time for us. Yeah, absolutely. Love to share. Uh, this is a pretty uh, big week for you. We've got uh, we've got the some big draft picks coming up this week. Any any teasers you might want to reveal? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a big week for us. Uh, I don't have any teasers, but we are always excited for the draft. So we'll be we have two picks in the first round. We have the number six and number eleven uh, overall picks, and we'll have the opportunity to draft at those positions or you never know. It's always in some ways an unpredictable day because teams are talking to one another, repositioning. Um, and so it, it does bring a degree of unpredictability, but we're excited. Last year we were able, we had the number one overall pick and we were able to bring in Paolo Bancaro who ended up being the rookie of the year and um, just had an exceptional rookie season. And so um, we feel really positive about the team's direction and, and the steps that we were able to take this past season and um, are excited to have these two picks to potentially add some young talent to to our roster. Yeah, absolutely. All the best for uh, day after tomorrow. Hope it goes as expected. Thank you. All right. Awesome. So um, I'd like to start things off with getting to know you a little bit first uh, before we talk about all the other business and technology stuff. So tell me a little bit about your background and kind of your journey to this point where you are and um, also, you know, what, what do you do for the magic? Uh, what's okay. Your yeah, sure. So my name is Jay Riola. I, my title is the executive vice president of strategy and innovation. And I've been with the Orlando magic since 2006. Um, and so before that, I went to undergrad at Trinity university in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Division three basketball player at Trinity and saw very quickly that if I wanted to stay connected to sports, it was going to most likely be in you know a business fashion or as a coach or some form, definitely not as a player. But um, during my time at Trinity, I had a couple of different internships where I, I was really interested in kind of getting a start in the sports business industry and seeing if it was something that interests me and um, if so, that I would be, uh, you know, interested in pursuing a career in. And so I interned with Cronky Sports, which is the ownership group for the Denver Nuggets, the Colorado Avalanche, uh, the MLS team. There's a major league lacrosse team in Denver, Colorado, uh, which is originally where I'm from. The next summer, I interned for the San Antonio Spurs and the WNBA franchise that they had at the time, the San Antonio Silver Stars. And that was great as well. Um, and then I did an internship with USA Basketball. And then finally, I actually had an internship here with the Orlando Magic that started in September of 2006. And so that's what brought me to Central Florida. And I have been here and been with the organization ever since. And so my first four years, I worked in an apartment that was responsible for um, what at the time was our new arena initiative. So when I moved here, we played in the TD Waterhouse Center, was later named Amway Arena, um, and opened as the O Arena. Many people know it as the O Arena. Um, and we were kind of in the midst of an effort to try to secure a new arena. And once that was publicly approved by both the city of Orlando and Orange County government, and um, kind of the financing plan was agreed to, I worked as a project manager on that project for a number of years uh, until Amway Center opened in, in 2010. And at that time, I transitioned into a role much more similar to what mine is today, albeit in its early phases. And, and that was, um, a mem I was a member of kind of a team that was tasked with using data, marketing technology, and analytical methods to try to improve the business side of our organization. And so in its early phases, that was a, a lot about using ticketing data and customer data to better price our tickets, to better understand who our ticket buyers were and how they were using the tickets that they purchased. Um, and over time has grown to an entire department that really is responsible for um, data management, business intelligence, digital marketing, 
innovation and other special projects. Um, and so it's a really fun role. It's, it's a role in which I get to support uh, a variety of areas within the organization. If you think about professional sports, one of the, the parts that I love is um, we're in a lot of different lines of business. You know, we sell tickets, we sell marketing partnerships, we sell retail merchandise, we have media rights, right? And we obviously are a team that's trying to win games and, and grow our fan base. And so it's it's fun because we use kind of the same tools and the same technologies and, and many of the same methods to help improve all of those different uh, business verticals within the organization. That is so cool. Actually, I didn't know that about you. I, from you and I talk and I hear you talk about technology and innovation and you always come across as somebody who has uh, a lot of that background, but it was pretty cool to know that you actually came from uh, the sports side and the um, project management side and then into technology. So, well, um, uh, that's that's good to know about your journey there. Uh, so you mentioned you came here from Colorado and you worked with a bunch of other teams. Um, how is uh, how is it, what's it like running a team here in Orlando? Because, you know, it's kind of an in-between city and uh, what are the unique challenges, I guess, or opportunities that you have here? Yeah, it's it's a it's an interesting question. I, I feel um, one. I feel being in Orlando is a great advantage for for the Magic and and for the teams here in Central Florida. Um, and, and another bit, I guess, of quick background: um, the Orlando Magic. In addition to our NBA franchise, we also own the Orlando Solar Bears. We have a minor league team that is recently moved to Osceola and it's called the Osceola Magic. And we have a professional esports team called Magic Gaming that participates in the NBA 2K League. So um, in addition to all of the areas that I mentioned in my, my previous answer, um, I have the opportunity to work with these different sports organizations, you know, that are part of our bigger portfolio of affiliates and properties. But um, playing in Orlando is great in many ways. I think some of the advantages are just the fact that there's what 80 million tourists that come here on an annual basis to um, enjoy our theme parks and our weather and all that Central Florida has to offer. And for us, we want to um, be an entertainment option that those travelers come and think about. And so um, the same way that perhaps if you or I were to go to Europe and see, want to see uh, a, a soccer league game, you know, professional football match and, and cared not a whole lot about the team other than we wanted to see a Premier League match or a La Liga match, you know, um, people come to Central Florida from all over the world and want to see an, a National Basketball Association game. And we're, we're lucky that we're the team here that can provide them that opportunity. And so we find that a lot of our single game buyers do come from Brazil or the UK or Canada or, or elsewhere around the world um, and are maybe come in originally indifferent to who the opponents are, but we want them to leave um, being a fan of the magic and having an enjoyable experience regardless of what happens on the court, but feeling like an NBA basketball experience and the one that we offered was truly legendary and, and something that, you know, if they come again, that they would be be open to take. So that's certainly one of the advantages. I think one of the challenges um, and opportunities that we have is that um, while Orlando is very different today in terms of having a lot more people who have grown up in Florida, there are a lot of people who have come to Orlando and moved here from all over and they bring with them attachments and affiliations to other professional sports organizations or NBA teams. And so we want you to be a fan of the magic, even if it means you moved here from Ohio or you know somewhere in, in the Northeast. And so I think that's an area of opportunity for us is, is maybe we start as your second favorite team um, because we're the team in kind of your newfound home market. Um, but what we want to do is again, deliver just a phenomenal experience and, and make the team and what we do in our community something that you look fondly upon and, and hopefully can use that to kind of grow our fan base. Yeah, no, that's a really unique opportunity being situated here in Orlando and having that volume of tourists uh, come here. Uh, but one of the things you mentioned there is also pretty cool is uh, the legendary experience that you talked about. And I know that uh, in our previous conversations, you keep coming back to the core values that the magic has and the legendary being, creating legendary experiences being one of them. Uh, 
share a little bit about you know the values that the magic has and how that influences what you do and how you approach some of these uh, strategic initiatives yeah thank you yeah our, so we have four core values at the magic it's teamwork community legendary and innovation um and so to dive a little bit deeper into all of those um, teamwork, obviously, we just want to foster a collaborative environment. All of the teams that are a part of the Orlando Magic organization are, are team sports. Um, and so not only do we want the competition that's occurring on the court or on the ice or in the video game to be one that is truly collaborative and, and focused on teamwork, we we ourselves in the business and the front office want to be good teammates of one another and be good teammates um, with those in our community. Community is our, our second core value. Um, and I think we we really do make this a focus for ours as an organization. So investing our time, our talent, and our resources to impact our community here in Central Florida. Um, probably the best example of that is the Orlando Magic Youth Foundation, um, which is our 501c3 organization that supports um, children and um, health and wellness throughout Central Florida. Um, but that also means a number of, of other things. And I know we'll probably talk about our commitment to engaging the local innovation community as part of that as well. Legendary is providing just a world-class experience. And so whether you're coming to our arena to experience a game in person and um, taking in all that we have to offer from hopefully great food and beverage to first class um, you know, customer service to a really rich and entertaining um, experience to interacting with us maybe at home on, on a broadcast of our game or coming to our app and seeing some of the content and the behind the scenes um, you know, content that we're able to deliver. And then our last core value is innovation. And um, for us, that, that means a lot of different things, but I think perhaps most important is to just promote a culture of creative thinking um, where employees are encouraged to take risks that can help us achieve breakthrough results. And you know, a lot of times I think you, you and many people think about technology as it relates to innovation, and that certainly can be the case, but I think it also can just be creating value from new ideas. Um, and those new ideas don't always require um, emerging technologies to take effect. It can be new business models or new processes that we put in place. And so we try to enable as much as we can of, of kind of that creative thinking and problem solving for us to, to add value to, to our teams, to our fans, to our business and our community. Absolutely. And I think that's, uh, that's probably the first way that you and I started talking was uh, through the Orlando Magic Innovation Challenge, which a little company called Hypervalidation had a uh, had a little thing that we could help you with. But uh, that's really where I first saw these values come into life, was uh, seeing how the Orlando Magic wholeheartedly engaged with the uh, broader tech and innovation community here in Orlando and uh, brought the values of you know um, teamwork, innovation, and community together uh, to basically create a, a really cool experience that uh, benefited everybody who participated. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit about, first off, you know, what, what made you want to attempt something like that? Yeah, well, and, and before I even do that, thank you to you and the hypervalidation team. We um, have, have benefited from your leadership and your facilitation and in our first two annual productions of that event and, and look forward to, to doing more. Um, yeah, we, we for a long time, I think, have been inspired by others in the Central Florida innovation ecosystem and community and for, um, for all the collaboration that goes on here. I, I really do think that that is kind of a unique advantage that Orlando and Central Florida has to offer is just there's, there's so much collaboration and practice sharing um, that occurs here. Uh, and so we, I think, recognized that there was a real opportunity for us to tap in to, to that creativity and to bring together people from all sorts of different backgrounds and uh, maturity levels in terms of whether you're you know, a multiple time entrepreneur who has successfully started and, and sold a business to a student at UCF or Rollins or Valencia who is, who is just looking at, at getting started to bring different people together with uh, different 
skill sets and knowledge bases and backgrounds and perspectives and uh, really challenge them to think about some of the business opportunities or business challenges that face the Orlando Magic and professional sports and entertainment organizations. And so, um, you know, this last year we did a reverse pitch where we presented six different areas of focus for us as an organization and, and asked participants of which I think we had 70 plus participate in, in the weekend um, to um, create solutions and then establish teams and work together with one another to develop uh, business ideas and, and pitch them to an expert panel of, of judges, which uh, was comprised of members from the Orlando Magic, from other uh, leaders throughout kind of the Central Florida innovation community. Um, and it was, it was incredible. Both events have been incredible and we've walked away inspired and with a lot of good ideas, good ideas and energy of how we can create value from new ideas, you know, and, and sometimes they're totally new ideas that we never had before. Sometimes they're extension of ideas that we uh, may have had, but um, present us with new information, new research that's been gathered, packaged in a different way, perhaps. And so there are even a couple examples I'd like to point out, you know, where we've we've implemented new solutions coming out of, of those challenges. And so one was um, a ticketing product focused on engaging college age students throughout Central Florida and, and getting them um, kind of active and coming out to more games. And so it was a college fast break pass that we launched this past season um, as, as kind of inspired by our first innovation challenge. Um, and this past year, there were just a number of ideas uh, around engaging fans who may never come out to the arena. And so whether that was through the metaverse or rewarding and encouraging actions on social media or um, through other ways, um, finding ways to be more active in those spaces while also connecting the customer from a data perspective back to us so that we could recognize and reward them. And, and so we're actively pursuing um, ways in which we can achieve that going into the start of the 23-24 season. But um, definitely have been thrilled with the innovation challenges and uh, the ideas that it's fostered and, and helped us cultivate here. That's awesome. Yeah, I love those examples too, because a lot of organizations think about it, uh, but all of them are like, they try to think about the ROI and they're not sure what they're going to get. And that's true, right? I mean, with events like this, you never know where, what ideas, where people are going to land and if there's value in those ideas or not. It's a matter of kind of taking a leap of faith and, and creating that experience and seeing what comes out of it, right? Because you're just putting all these things into a, into a little uh, boiling pot, melting pot, and then see what comes out. But also, I think uh, the value that in uh, you create for yeah. the community because I think uh, participants of this experience learn so much about the sports business. They learn about how uh, you know real businesses implement these technologies, and they get a chance to uh, ask questions to some of your leaders and uh, and learn from their experience from a you know from a real world perspective to help wet some of these ideas out. So I think it's such a cool experience that you're creating. And thank you again for for doing that for our community. Yeah, thank you. I, and I do, I think the events are a great representation of all of our core values being activated at once. You know, you think about um, it requires teamwork for these teams of strangers to come together and in two and a half days, create two days, really create um, a viable business idea that they have to feel comfortable pitching. It's obviously community focused. Um, we're aiming to deliver a legendary experience and um, we do surveys after the fact to measure how people felt about their overall experience. And we've gotten really positive results and where maybe we have had some constructive feedback. We've tried to focus on improving in those areas. And then it's all around innovation. It's all around kind of taking these new ideas and creating value from it. Um, so absolutely. Yeah. And on that note, I mean, one of the things, that, uh, another thing that Orlando Magic does really well that I've seen is, is working with partners, right? And not just the community, but uh, corporate partners too. Uh, you had this big partnership with Advent Health, with the training center, state-of-the-art training center, uh, but also you recently announced a partnership with the lead health and uh, sports accelerator here in Lake Nona. 
Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, the partnerships approach and maybe how you go about finding the right partner that's going to provide uh, kind of the best value for what you're looking to do strategically? Sure. Yeah. So you, for, first you touched on, you know, part of our, our business is um, in selling and activating marketing partnerships and finding companies that are um, obviously interested in, in sports business and, and kind of getting in front of our fans in a way that is meaningful for them from a marketing standpoint. And so I think you touched on one that has um, been just kind of a crucial informative partner of ours in Advent Health. And we recently opened the new Advent Health Training Center, which is a state-of-the-art, absolutely first-class training center that our, our players are using. Um, and it has uh, just incredible amounts of, of technology and innovation within it to, to help our team perform at its optimal level. Uh, at the same time, it's it's an Advent Health uh, medical facility, you know, where um, your everyday af athlete on kind of the other side of the training center can go in and receive um, physical care for, um, you know, issues that, that they may be facing. And so I think Advent Health is a phenomenal uh, partner to focus on because of their their commitment to just first class experience and, and innovation and, and that uh, training center is a great representation of that. Um, we also have a variety of other partners, you know, and I'll kind of use that as the descriptor here that uh, we we work with to bring our business to life. Um, and so Ticketmaster, who's our ticketing partner, has um, been a great partner in helping us think of of new and innovative ways to deliver flexible ticketing solutions and, and new ticketing products. And so I think, you know, people always think about Ticketmaster as kind of a, a ticketing marketplace where you can buy tickets and, and more recently maybe resell tickets. Um, but they have helped us create uh, new ticketing products and new, new features to our products that have helped improve the user experience, um, have helped us create entirely new products, um, one of which we call uh, Magic Money, which is an, a digital currency that our season ticket holders can create by returning tickets to games that they um, are unable to attend and then using it to customize their experience at other games. And so, um, you know, those types of solutions wouldn't be brought to life if it weren't for the commitment of, of some of our partners like like Ticketmaster and working with us to re-engineer solutions. Um, and then I think the last one you touched on is, is a good example of a community partner, but also, you know, a marketing partner of ours in LEAD, um, Lake Nona and kind of their um, innovation ecosystem. And so they have a portfolio of startups that have been admitted into their academy and received mentorship and training and other resources. Um, and all of those startups are focused on sports or health tech and wellness. Um, and so obviously a shared uh, alignment there and finding ways where we can work together with LEAD and their startups to develop pilots or proof of concepts or give them a platform to um, to trial some new, you know, products or features and give them a chance to maybe scale and receive feedback. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of collaboration that's occurred there. It's also become the official home of our esports uh, team, Magic Gaming. And so we actually moved our studio into their Lake Nona facility and the team trains and plays remote games out of, out of a studio there. We recently actually held uh, an in-person game that was free to the public against the Charlotte Hornets um, esports team and had just an incredible, uh, incredible event that day, the, the Sunday before Memorial Day. And yes, yeah, so I think partners are, are really important in our business. Um, you know, we we rely and work with a lot. Uh, and the one thing that I, I can tell you that that we're really focused on here at The Magic is having just incredible relationships with those partners and looking at them as true partners, you know, not just someone who is um, marketing with us or whose technology we're licensing, but truly having a good working relationship so that we can try to unlock as much value uh, as possible from, from that partnership and that relationship that we have. Absolutely. I think that's what comes out from what I just heard is it's not just about uh, doing something together or delivering an event or delivering a program or service together, but it's really about 
co-creating, right? And innovating yes. and bringing something new to market that wouldn't have existed uh, outside of this partnership. So I really like how you think about partnerships as, uh, as a co-creation opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's that's right. That's spot on. That's well said. And I think that's that's the aim and that we're we're taking to our partners for sure. Awesome. Uh, speaking of that, um, you've been involved in quite a few really cool technology projects. I know you've told me a few things in the past, but uh, I'd love to know kind of where the state of art is right now for you and the magic and some of the uh, successes maybe. And if you are, if you're open to share some of the uh, costly lessons, uh, perhaps that uh, you've learned in messing around on the bleeding edge of technology, but uh, what's, uh, what's new and cooking there? Yeah. I, so I, I think one place that I would start would be our long-term commitment to data and analytics. Um, and a lot of this was the result of timing was to when we opened Amway Center back in 2010. And so, you know, 2010 was the time that big data and analytics was really taking off across all industries, um, including sports. It also was the time in our business that online resale marketplaces like StubHub and SeatGeek and Vivid and, and many names that people may be familiar with today um, were really just kind of in their initial phases in terms of their emergence. And so for us as a team, they were not just as the Orlando Magic, but across all sports and entertainment were causing everyone to kind of re-examine how were we pricing our tickets to who were we selling our tickets? Are we accurately priced? And if you're not, you know, your tickets may immediately get bought up and resold. If you're too overpriced, they may not sell at all. And so thinking really strategically about how are we how are we pricing our tickets and, and in many ways following the lead of other industries and in tourism and hospitality and thinking about variable pricing, dynamic pricing, revenue and inventory management. Um, and so for us as a team, I think kind of the convergence of, of big data and analytics and <clears throat> and kind of the evolution that was occurring in ticketing um, really forced us to kind of um, think critically about this and be an early investor in this space. And so I, I mentioned that because I think it's served as a backbone to a lot of our marketing technology and innovation efforts has been the fact that we we were one of the first, if not the first professional sports team to invest in an enterprise data warehouse and license advanced analytics software. And over time, grow a staff that's focused on data mining and building statistical models and really studying the data and then working with our business partners in ticketing and in partnerships and marketing to kind of glean insights and put those insights in, into action in meaningful ways. Um, and so fast forward over a decade, you know, to 2023, um, and we we've built a data asset that has um, a lot of data and interactions that come from ticketing experiences, concessions and retail purchases, um, digital engagements and interactions that someone may have on our website or app or a purchase that you make on our online store. And so our focus is increasingly on how can we deliver a personalized fan experience that's meaningful um, to that fan and, and uses what we know about them either explicitly or implicitly right through um, the data that we've collected or the analysis that we've done to deliver a better user experience. Um, and that could be in person at the arena. It could be in our app and feeding you better content or recommendations on video or podcast or other things that are more meaningful to you. Um, and so that that's where we're focused a lot uh, as, as an organization and I think as a league as well. Um, if you watched an NBA playoff game, you saw a lot of advertising for the NBA app or their new membership program called NBA ID, um, which, which is kind of a, a membership platform that they have at the league level. Cool. Um, so if you don't mind me diving into the weeds on that uh, point a little bit, uh, being a bit geeky myself, uh, a lot of times organizations collect a lot of data and it's hard enough to collect data because you have so many different data sources and bringing them all into one place is, is a hard task in itself. 
but relative to what you do with it, that's actually the easy part, right? Bringing the data into one place, but then how do you actually make it actionable? And maybe you, if you have any methodologies or techniques or practices that you do in terms of what questions you ask and how you uh, make data-driven decisions uh, and glean insights from the data, like how do you go about doing that part? Yeah, good, good question. Well, one is one is having curious employees um, who are interested in what the data says and, and studying, right? And so asking for information and analysis is part of their decision-making process, which um, I'm really grateful. We we have a strong culture of that. Here at the magic and it's it starts at the top you know it starts at ownership and our ceo and our team president all of who of which i think have um just a, a great and kind of natural appetite to see and understand and listen to to data um or at least have it be a part of a decision making process for sure um i think so there's a variety of ways one is is delivering what we call business intelligence solutions to um, different people throughout the organization. Um, and so for, for us, that may be dashboards, it may be automated reports, it may be some other type of reporting solution, but putting information in the hands of, of operators um, and of people throughout the business. But it certainly goes beyond that as well. I think it's it's not just serving a report to someone, right? It's I think um, helping them answer questions that are crucial to to their area of the business, um, and so that's a big part of it. But I think to kind of connect it back into the personalization conversation is how how are we making decisions that are best for our fans, you know? And so a couple of examples there. Um, you know, and one of one of which I mentioned earlier was our our magic money program. That was pretty. That's been pretty disruptive to um, our business, but it was done really in a way that put uh, our fans first. So we realized that season ticket holders weren't personally attending all of our forty one home games. Right, like that's that's a lot of games, and there's often times that we're playing three or four games a week and a fan has um, other commitments and can't make it to all of those games. And so rather than forcing them to resell their tickets or give their tickets away or just have them go unused, giving them a convenient digital solution to return the tickets to us, convert the dollar value into a currency that they can use to customize their experience, giving us the inventory back so we can, we can resell it um, or utilize it in some other way but giving the fan kind of the tool to customize their experience the way that they see fit. Um, obviously, you're taking tickets back and that can make you uncomfortable because you had sold the ticket and, and you're willing to accept it back and with no guarantee that you may resell it again. Um, you have to provide the, the fan with meaningful options of how they use that currency in the future. So they have to be able to upgrade their seed or buy a bigger block or buy concessions or merchandise. Um, and then there's internal challenges, right? Like the accounting of the program is, is less convenient for us, but all of these decisions were made, I think, with um, a fan first mentality around what, what's going to be the best solution, the most legendary solution we can present our fans with. Um, and we felt the data showed just based on personal attendance, overall ticket utilization, and what we knew from survey and other research was perhaps the number one pain point of a lot of our season ticket members was just they weren't able to use all of their games. And so rather than have them psychologically think of the games that they can't use as waste, right, and kind of this, this over time makes me less likely to renew a membership, give them an option where they can personalize their experience. Um, and then, you know, another layer kind of connected back into the data conversation is, now we have visibility into what is that fan's preferences because they are digitally interacting with us to use their magic money. And so we know if there's particular retail or concession items that they're commonly purchasing or opponents that they're choosing to upgrade 
their tickets for or buy a suite to host, you know, friends and family for a night out. So, um, yeah, I think that that kind of is is another just a good example of a willingness to to innovate and back to your question, kind of like done with a view towards doing what's right for our customer and having the trust and the belief that it will better our business um, to do so. Oh, that was a fantastic answer. Thank you. Uh, you made me very happy with that because a lot of times uh, folks ha have a very closed ended view to data and they have like, uh, they want a clear answer to everything. And I loved how you brought that uh, uh, that example of the uh, magic box in there was because you really had to go at it um, from a point of view of, first of all, you have to create the infrastructure to get access to the data in a way that's available to the people who need it at the level they want. But on top of that, you have to build a culture for uh, enabling uh, your employees to go data mine and explore this stuff. And at the same time, it's not just willy nilly, it's very customer centric on how is this cust how is how are you creating value for the customer through that exploration too. So I loved how you brought that together. Um, that was fantastic. Yeah, uh, that's a great example of uh, for some of your peers as well in other you know uh, organizations to see that you know some of this innovation is is not about having black and white ROI type conversations. it's it's about creating the infrastructure that enables innovation to happen. And you can't always predict the outcome, but if you don't do the basic homework of creating that infrastructure and taking those risky bets, you're never gonna have uh, have those outcomes to speak of. So that's great, yeah. grabbed it. Um, cool, so on that note, we're into our last few minutes here. Uh, speaking of peers, um, any resources, recommendations, tips and tricks, uh, things you'd like to share with uh, leaders in your position? Um well, so a couple things. One, one that's pretty timely, I think, um, for us. We we just had a leadership offsite where we we shared our OKRs, objective and key results. So um, I'm I am kind of a super nerd as it relates to OKRs, and I, I've I have followed the OKR kind of goal setting process at. An individual level at, at a department level for a long time and it's it's become a uh, goal setting technique that we as an organization are following and i think it has helped align us it's helped us communicate what are our what are our priorities what are our focuses and how are we going to measure um, how we achieve in that regard and so if you're unfamiliar with okr um, it's it's a goal setting process, uh, really made made famous by by Google. Um, but there's a book called Measure What Matters uh, by John Doerr that I think communicates really effectively how to implement an OKR goal setting process, where you identify you know just a handful of key objectives and then key results underneath each of those objectives that will really serve as your guidepost around kind of what are we looking to achieve and how will we measure success in those areas. Um, and so for me, it's been it's, it's a clarifying process to go through on an individual level, on an apartment level. And as we as an organization have started to um, activate those and share those amongst one another, I think it's it's been unifying or it's maybe called into question where there is disalignment and it's brought to the table healthy conversations around um, what should be our focuses and then how are we measuring ourselves? That's great. Yeah. Uh, any other uh, reading or books that you really enjoyed that has influenced how you, uh, how you lead in these situations? Well, um, I am a, I'm a huge podcast listener um, and I am listening to Michael Lewis's podcast um right now i think it's called against the rules i think it's on its third season um but he is someone i've always enjoyed his books his book moneyball uh was released while i was in college and kind of i think opened my mind to the ability to have a role in sports focused on data and quantitative analysis um and so against the rules is an amazing podcast it, it focuses on um you know like season three is on kind of the hidden experts amongst us and finding 
who those hidden experts are and, and helping um, to kind of um, tap into their knowledge and their expertise in ways that can deliver value. So um, that would be a podcast that, that more on a more casual level I listen to, but absolutely love. And it, it helps spark motivation and inspiration in a lot of ways for me. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Well, uh, we're at time here, but I have time for one last question and um, want to help spread the word on whatever you think is uh, worth sharing right now. Any any asks that you have for the community, for our, uh, the audience on uh, anything we can do for the magic or support the magic in some way? Yeah, you uh, keep an eye out for our schedule release in August and obviously um, Welcome everyone to, especially those in Central Florida to come and support the team. Um, but more specifically, maybe for this audience, uh, keep an eye out for what would be our third annual Orlando Magic Innovation Challenge. Uh, typically it's after the first of the year, but are always looking forward to that event. And um, this year we may, we may hopefully choose to implement some other innovation focused and inspired events as well. And so, um, would love for people to um, get involved with those. And in the meantime, reach out to me or other members of the Orlando Magic Business Strategy and Innovation Team on LinkedIn and just stay connected with us. Um, and so those would be some calls to action that, that I would, would ask this group for. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. You know, again, a big fan of you and uh, the magic and all the things that you do and uh, for making such a difference in the community as well and being such a great uh, supporter of the community. I really appreciate everything you guys do. And of course, for some of the cool innovations and the opportunity for some of the community members to uh, co-create alongside you. That Thanks for everything that you do. And thanks for making some time. I really enjoyed this chat. Wish we could Absolutely. talk. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, I appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity to share and and be featured and for the partnership that we've had with you and hypervalidation as well. So thank you. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Jay. Take care. Right.